I've always maintained this argument that there's some, some sort of ulterior motive behind Mesut Ozil. It's nothing to do with that. Clearly, he doesn't fit into the plans of the managers that have come in for a variety of reasons. The notion that he has an integrity, if he was, he's a player that if he wanted to play, then he could have got a loan move, he could have got someone to pick up some of his salary, done a deal with Fenerbahce, go out on loan, get Fenerbahce to cover 150 grand a week of his loan fee, he plays. Now, people say, well, it's because he doesn't, want, doesn't, doesn't have to. Yeah, but as Danny will tell you, his career doesn't last forever. So if he wants to play, if he has any integrity about him as an elite footballer, he may not like the fact he's been marginalised, which probably is down to him and not the 350 grand a week that they continue to pay him whilst he's not playing. It's probably to do with his performance. But the, it, it, look, it, at the end of the day, Arsenal have just, I think, just borrowed £120 million pounds from the government under the government's loan scheme. So that makes it all, <laughs> all the more perplexing when you've got billionaire owners that are in place that they can actually bridge the gap themselves if they choose to. But Mesut Ozil is something they need to resolve. And if it's £9 million quid and it's paid over six months or, or 18 months or whatever it is, it doesn't make a lot of difference to Mesut Ozil unless he wants to particularly make a point. If he has one ounce of integrity, he'd want to be out of Arsenal. You ever heard anything like it, Danny? Ozil still picking up. No fault of his. Arsenal it is a fault put of the contract. His. Well, well, they put the contract it, no, in front no, of him. It's a fault of his. because of the, yeah, but that's week, fine. But, nothing. but I hate that argument, Jim, because it's absolute claptrap. It is a fault of his because the reasons why he's not playing is because of his performance. Not necessarily. He signed a contract which said Arsenal must pay him. right? And he must also be worth what he's being paid. So it is a fault of his because he's not being picked because he isn't worth being put in the side. So it does Well, it's a, a fault, fault it's, 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 a, it's a fault, Simon, of both. The, the club was stupid but, enough to give him the contract. But it's not about the money, Dan. Week it's not about... Everyone keeps making it about no, the money. No, I'm moving on. You just mentioned it. the money. Arsenal are borrowing £120 million. No, But that's, 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 that's a different... That's because they're paying so no, much. That, that's a different discussion. I'm talking about the impoverished, the impoverished nature of the Premier League and the fact that maybe £9 million quid is more meaningful in terms of paying it on the drip than it once once was. But the notion the mentality... that it's not his fault is nonsense. It is his no, he's fault. No, he's, he, he has to take some of the blame because as a footballer, you have, to, you have to show that you want to play, show some hunger and desire and you can manipulate your situation contractually and financially. If he had a year left of his season, he was owed 15 million quid, whatever it is, he could have gone to Arsenal and gone, look, I'll give me eight and I'll give me half and I'll go. He's a very wealthy man. Do you know? We've all done these deals. And got you know, the gap I, I left by the, the, the club coming in. To a degree, you get half of it bridged, maybe two thirds of it, and you, you miss out on a couple of mil when you've got 20, 30 in the bank, whatever. You know, it's all relative. If you've got a desire to play and got some balls, if you want to sit there and have an easy life for two years and do nothing, then you'll do what he's done.